Thank you very much, Hugh. Um, I would like to start with uh, giving a few more names uh, since this is about asking questions to FPA. And as we have heard, this is one of the unique opportunities left to do so. Um, it's going to be a lot of work for a single person, so I've asked my team of FPA participants to join in and uh, to participate in this meeting. And we have a few of them sitting here in the front rows, and I will uh, give their names, and I will ask them to stand up so you can associate an, a face with that name, and those are the people to contact then in, in the networking tea after my presentation. And I'm sure, and I will uh, um, make sure, that there will be questions left. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mirek Jurschak from uh, Merck Seono, Darmstadt. We have Peter Simpson from AstraZeneca, and we have Peter Ruvens from Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so those are the people um, which uh, deserve a lot of credit for everything you like, uh, for everything you dislike, uh, you can blame it on me. Um, as we have heard today, um, we are talking about the lead factory, which might be confused with the plumbing business. Um, uh, it's, it's not really about the plumbing business, although you might think of it as solving uh, the problem of a, of a plugged pipeline uh, at the very beginning of the drug discovery process. And let's see if I can make this work. Okay. Um, we are in the arena today of small molecule drug discovery and uh, what is a shared view in, in that group of FPR companies participating in, in this proposal, bringing that proposal forward, is that novel lead structures as well as novel druggable targets are really an innovation driver of that part of, of early drug discovery. And uh, as I've mentioned before, filling that pipeline with ever novel ideas on druggable targets, on disease mechanisms, is equally uh, difficult as finding the appropriate lead structures to approach these problems. And that's why we thought we can solve that only if we get reinforcement uh, and, and joint, uh, uh, joint forces with academic research. We felt that since both academic research as well as uh, industrial research tackle these problems from different angles, uh, having different in many cases, complementary strength. It's a perfect uh, uh, scenario to make use of a private-public partnership to tackle the most challenging problems, which are evident if you look at pharmaceutical project portfolios, having an increased number of projects which we term intractable, where it's really difficult to come up with meaningful lead structures, combining all the necessary properties that you need for a drug molecule within a single compound. For the academic side, it's, it's equally challenging to bring forward innovative tool compounds to progress basic research in terms of target mechanisms, for example. And part of that limitation comes from the limited accessibility of chemical collections, as well as a still limited access to medicinal chemistry resources to follow up on whatever comes out of screening. Yeah? So combining the strengths of academic research in that field with industry uh, uh, expertise appears to be very appealing, at least to the industry part in, in, in this uh, consortium to form. So this slide now gives you the bird view on what we are intending to do. Most of you will be very familiar with the screening process, which is nothing else but taking a suitable bioassay, bringing that into contact with lots of chemicals, yeah, filtering out the few meaningful compounds that interact in the desired uh, way with your target receptor, with your pathway maybe uh, also, and discriminating all the assay artifacts that screening typically also delivers. And that is pretty much depicted also, and, and, and you will find that in the processes behind screening, starting with the primary screen, screening and uh, having a filtering process that then somehow um, selects the few meaningful hits from the vast majority 
of artifacts in the end. And as I've mentioned before, what we propose here has a, has a dual purpose. We want to provide quality compounds either to be introduced in the subsequent hit to lead process, entering maybe, if successful then, into a full lead optimization program. So that's the track uh, towards um, the uh, um, drug development. Yeah, that's basically this track above. But it's also a very likely scenario and, a very, uh, and we are encouraging to do so to exploit what we uh, intend to uh, provide with our project um, for the generation of meaningful tool compounds for subsequent target research. So what we are going to provide with the lead, um, European lead factory is we are going to assemble and provide access to a comprehensive high quality compound collection, which we call the joint European compound collection. I will give you some more details in the next few slides. We will set up a, pro, uh, a process that takes care of the screening and the delivery of what we call a qualified hit list at the very end, containing a limited number of those candidate compounds which fulfill all the desired criteria that are defined in the project. Um, these compounds later on can serve, as I've mentioned before, as starting points for drug development programs as well as tool compounds for target research. It's going to provide an entirely novel platform to foster public-private partnerships. Taking academic ideas, providing an industrial-like uh, discovery platform. And what you will also establish after going through a very ambitious program of taking the current numbers, almost 240 projects over a five-year um, funding period, we will generate, of course, a huge body of information yeah, of valuable data that can be either exploited directly um, by the public later on, as well as giving ideas um, towards library generation then in the future. As I've mentioned before, one step is um, uh, the assembly of a comprehensive high quality compound library. We call it uh, the Joint European Compound Collection. And that collection is going to be composed of two parts. One part is being uh, brought in by industry, yeah, that is the uh, FP or consortium library, if you want, compiling the medicinal chemistry expertise of these companies coming from, from uh, many years of, um, of drug discovery and leap optimization work. Yeah. So we really want to uh, incorporate that knowledge in this pharma part of the library. Since we clearly have the intention to focus on the generation of intellectual property, we felt that it is an, uh, of utmost importance uh, for this um, um, pharma library to provide unique compounds. Unique compounds means compounds that are not readily available from commercial sources from the outside. Yeah? So we will find a good mixture in that compound library of medicinal, chemistry, handcrafted compounds coming from lead optimization programs with all the secondary properties that have also been trained into these molecules already, yeah. uh, as well as uh, compounds coming from automated parallel synthesis, which of course also have incorporated many of the design principles and, and lessons that pharma industry uh, has made during the last couple of, of decades. We want to complement that part of the joint European compound library by something novel, something that is not what we have in terms of the quality in, in that pharma part of the library. And uh, we want to generate in that context a public compound collection, yeah? quite sizable. I will come to the numbers later on with two ideas. As I've mentioned before, we want to differentiate the chemistry that we see in these libraries that we put into the uh, public compound uh, collection. And the second uh, uh, aspect is, as I've mentioned before, we are seeing an increasing number of what we call intractable targets, targets that are of lower druggability, where we have problems finding suitable starting points. And there are plenty of ideas out there in the academic scene 
to tackle these, uh, um, um, uh, these targets, and we want to collect these ideas, translate them into chemistry, introduce them into a professional screening process.